everybody, Miss Allen and Mosby. Welcome to virtual field trip number three. On this field trip, we're going to be talking about Virginia's most wonderful renewable resource, trees. Trees provide habitats for wildlife. They provide support for um, erosion or they hold back the erosion that we talked about in the past. They also provide us oxygen. So they are also uh, wonderful providers for um, products like lumber. We uh, take the renewable resource and we turn it into byproducts of lumber and lumber turns into houses and all these other things that we use just about every single day. Identifying trees can get tricky, but in the beginning, just start by looking at the three main features, the bark, the leaves, and the crown. A sycamore tree can grow to about 100 feet in height and it has a beautiful rounded crown. These are sycamore leaves. Sycamore leaves are usually broader than they are tall and they have multiple lobes. But I think one of the most distinctive features of the sycamore is this beautiful bark. It has a nice thin bark that peels off in little sections and it leaves this sort of mottled effect to the tree. Another name for the sycamore tree is the buttonwood tree. That's because it has a sort of unique fruit called a button ball that you can often find at the outer tips of its branches or laying beneath it on the ground. Okay, there's one on the ground right now. Pick it up for you so you can see better. Okay, here's another look at a sycamore. I'm gonna follow the branch out and you can see some of the fruits hanging right off the tip of the branch there. Sycamores are also often called American plane trees. So they're known as American plane trees, most often sycamores and also buttonwoods. One fun fact related to the buttonwood name is that when the New York Stock Exchange was established, the founders signed the papers with all of the rules and bylaws of how the stock exchange would work um, underneath a buttonwood tree on Wall Street. And that's why the agreement they created is known as the Buttonwood Agreement. I am standing in front of the common apple tree. It happens to be part of the rose family. This tree is not one of the native plants um, of to North America or Virginia. It's Virginia part of North America. Um, it was introduced to us by the early settlers. Apple trees are grown in all 50 states, with Virginia being the um, part of the top 10% of growers of apple trees. So the leaves of the apple tree are ovate, and they have toothed edges. Okay. So these are the blossoms of the apple tree, and um, they have five petals to them and they are white. Sometimes they come in pink and you can see the stamens and the pistils. You can see actually the pollen there. Not all of the petals are on this because as you can see, it's been very windy and has been raining lately. But an excellent example of the apple blossoms and then down here you can see the stamen, the pistil, and then down there would be the ovules where the seeds come in. Hey boys and girls, here's Mrs. Scommer in a dogwood tree. Yes, I'm in a dogwood tree. Now, here's the interesting thing about dogwood trees, okay? They're not really dogs. There's no dogs in the dogwood tree. Do you see any dogs? No, and they don't bark. So, how's the best way to identify a dogwood tree? Look for the bark. <laughs> That's funny. Start laughing. Nobody's laughing. Laugh now. <laughs> hey, boy. hey boys and girls, look what I see. I see a dog. Uh oh. In a dogwood tree.
The leaves of a cherry tree are ovate, just basically means they're in the shape of an oval and they have little ridges along the edges. You can see quite well there. The flowers grow in clusters of three to five. And the bark of a cherry tree is particularly interesting. It's sort of a chestnut brown and it has these uh, horizontal lenticels is what those are called. The lenticels allow for the exchange of gases between the atmosphere and the internal part of the tree. I'm standing in front of an eastern redbud tree. I thought it would be interesting to take a look at it because people often confuse it with an ornamental cherry tree. From afar, they look fairly similar because they have a slender trunk that branches out into a big, broad crown. But when we get closer, you'll see some of the difference. This is the bark of the eastern redbud. You can see it doesn't have the horizontal lenticels that a cherry tree has. One of the ways you can tell an eastern redbud apart from a cherry tree are the twigs, which are darker and have more of a zigzag pattern to them. Fun fact, the eastern redbud is also known as the spicewood tree. That's because when it's um, got new green shoots on it, you can use those as a spice for venison or rabbit or opossum or whatever game animal you'd like to be cooking. Another fun fact about the eastern redbud is that the eastern woodland Indians used to take the flowers and either eat them raw or boiled. So the bark of the red oak, you can see, um, comes like in these ridges. And the shinier part is another indication that this is a red oak because um, they come down in shiny little stripes down this. So um, the leaves of a red oak, you can see them up here, um, they have many lobes. The lobes are these little branches that kind of shoot off from the stem of the leaf. Um, you can tell the difference between a red oak and a white oak by the ends of the leaf. This red oak has jagged or pointy ends, and a white oak, the ends of the leaf would be a little bit more rounded. So these um, furry little things on the red oak are called catkins. It is the Dutch word for cattails, and you can kind of see that they do look a little bit like a cat's tail. Hey boys and girls, it's me, Mrs. Gomer. How's it going? Hey, this is a tree, another tree. This is called a crepe myrtle tree. Now, crepe myrtle trees are interesting because they only grow in the south. They don't grow in the north, so if you're moving to Pennsylvania, you can't take it with you. Also, you like crepes? I like crepes, but this crepe, you can't eat. Hey, and here's something to think about. Why did the tree stop going to its bank? Give up? It opened a new branch. Now that's funny. This red maple tree, I am not destroying it, I'm just showing you the leaves, has lobed leaves. And you can see, if you think about the Canadian flag, that's the Canadian flag right there, the three points to it, three lobes. And it has paired seeds. Where are they? Like those. And if you notice 
when they float in the air, they kind of like look, look like little helicopters. Look, look, look. They look like little helicopters as they float down to the ground. This red maple, the bark is um, a grayish color and it has scaly plates. All right. So the red maple is um, a tree that is valued by furniture makers and especially by people who make wood instruments. If you ever look at the back of a violin, for those of you who have a violin, and notice the pattern of the wood, um, that is basically what the maple is um, kind of known for. Thanks, Mosby. Up until now, we've been talking about deciduous trees. Deciduous trees are trees that lose their leaves. But Virginia also is home, of course, to coniferous trees. A conifer or a coniferous tree has needle-like leaves and cones that bear seeds. Behind me is one example of a coniferous tree. This is a white pine. White pines can live for up to 500 years. This is one of their pine cones. This one's already opened up and released all of the seeds that were inside of it. And their needles come in little bundles called fascicles. And when you look at a fascicle, if I can get a hold of one here, they typically have five needles in a bundle. There's a great look at the white pine in full. The white pine was quite abundant during the pre-Civil War era, and it was super easy to cut. So a lot of floors in pre-Civil War buildings are made out of white pine. One exception is Mount Vernon. George Washington didn't like that the white pine tended to cup, so he insisted that they use yellow pine for the flooring instead. Another common conifer is the Virginia pine, which is this pine tree behind so me. So the fascicles on the Virginia pine come in pairs. I'm not sure you can really see it, but there's two right so there. up there hard for me to reach, obviously, is a um, pine cone, the Virginia pine pine cone. And you can tell the difference between the Virginia pine cones and other pine cones because they are shorter and rounder, kind of short and squatty. So the Virginia pine is mainly used for construction, like bridges, uh, I know I've seen it in houses and furniture, um, but did you know that it is the preferred place for a uh, woodpecker to nest. Hey boys and girls, I'm not going to tell you who I am because you know, I've already said it in the other two videos. So just go back and look at those if you need to know who I am. I'm in hanging out in a birch tree right now. That's right. A birch tree. See that? That's a birch tree. Birch trees aren't my favorite trees because they're messy. And I don't like messes, so whatever you're doing, you might want to go clean that up now. Secondly, a birch tree. There it is. Isn't it pretty? Birch trees are interesting, and I really don't know why, so I'd suggest you go Google that, because you know why? The people are starting to look at me funny around here, because I'm, like, creeping out in trees. An American holly tree can grow up to about 50 feet in height and although this one clearly has been trimmed around the base of it, when allowed to grow naturally they have a crown that sort of is in the shape of a pyramid. A fun fact about the American holly is that it comes in male and female versions. You can tell this is a female because it has bright red berries. You can also tell it's a female because on the flowers, you can see the berry growing right out of the center. The leaves of an American holly are kind of leathery feeling and they've got spines on the margin of the leaves. Hey guys, I wanna show you something. Do you see this tree here? That's called a sapling. I'm showing you sa this sapling tree for one reason and one reason only. Where do baby trees go to learn? Elementary school. <laughs>
laugh. Stop! You're killing me, Mrs. Scamra. That's all for now. We hope you'll go out into your own neighborhood and identify the common trees that you're seeing. Can you see me? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to make like a tree. Ow, ow, and leave. I am over here literally rolling on the floor. Well, except I'm sitting here, but in my mind I'm rolling on the floor.